Let's pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I just appreciate how you've used this tool to reach so many people, and I pray that your will be done here in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go back, way back, to Numbers 30. Now, this is something I've thought about a few times before, and I've seen a few people talk a little bit about um, the church being the bride of Christ or uh, how we're going to be raptured to the place that Jesus had prepared for us to sit out the time of Jacob's trouble here on earth. So let me get right to this. I'm going to read the passage. So in Numbers 30, as Mo and Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word, he shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Now, here's where we move on. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond being in her father's house in her youth and her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul and her father shall hold his peace he keeps his mouth shut at her then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand however but if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. Okay, so talking about a, uh, a woman in her youth in her father's house. Okay, maybe you know where I'm going with this. Verse 6. If she had at all an husband, when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it and held his peace, he kept his mouth shut, he didn't say anything, at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. Her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. For emphasis, I repeated that. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect. And the Lord shall forgive her. So this might be a stretch to some people, but let's say being part of the church, the bride of Christ, being children of God has some added benefits to it. And uh, I really, I really sincerely don't believe I'm taking this too far and stretching this too far, but let's just say as the church, we're identified with the female. We are the bride. Um, the bride in our father's house, so to speak, in, and as God the Father, or with Jesus, our husband, that it's very possible that as the church, God can revoke our vows where we have bound our soul and maybe unknowingly that our husband Jesus can break these binds that have bound our soul before Satan and violated God's will and God's word and God's plan for our lives that as the church, as the body, as the bride of Christ, um, that 
we may be pardoned, we may be um, heirs of something that's even greater than some of us have considered before. That even here in this lifetime, when we understand salvation and forgiveness of sins, that at that point, once, be, once we become a child of God through Jesus Christ, once we become part of the bride, the church, the bride of Christ, that God himself can disallow our vows that maybe Satan has connived and, and in a cunning way used to hold us back in our in our life, in our finances, in our health, in our, uh, in our employment, in our education, that we're not cursed because of our parents or our grandparents, that we're not bound under generational curses, that we are free because God is our Father. And as the church, Jesus is our husband. He is preparing a place for us to take us any day now. That just like the days of old, the the Jewish uh, Jewish uh, planning and preparation that the husband would make in his father's house to prepare a room for his bride, where he would take for seven days undisturbed, that the bride would only come out at the end of seven days to to reveal herself, and then they would have the wedding feast. Man, I just, I'm, I'm so excited, I'm stirred up. I uh, was responding to a comment on one of my videos, and uh, I'm just amazed. If you're still with me here this far in seven minutes in, um, like this video. I know it's sometimes easy to get caught up in, in following along with, uh, with where we're reading or what we're talking about, and uh, our, our, subscribers in less than a month have doubled our views are just through the roof and um, this isn't for views this isn't for subscribers however views represent people that are hearing the message that are that are seeing what I'm putting out there and if this means anything to you uh, like it does to me this should make you excited that, yeah, the rapture is before the tribulation. That we will be spared of Jacob's trouble. It's for Israel. For God to keep his word when he gave the blessing and the cursing. He had to keep his word and follow through on it. Not because he wanted to. But, nevertheless, Israel will be saved. Israel um, will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Somebody asked about the... The, the Jews having their names in the book of life. Um, I mean, if they're going to accept Jesus as a nation, as their Messiah, then yeah, their name is going to end up in the book of life. And I don't know if the book of life is written and their names already there, or if the book of life is being written as people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I don't know that. I don't need to know everything. Um, anyway. Back to Daniel, and uh, I'll close. Daniel 11, verse 36, is where the Antichrist exalts himself. He will magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Capital G. Okay? That's verse 36 in Daniel 11. And then verse 45 in Daniel 11. He shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Wow. Daniel 12, um, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, which we believe that's the rapture of the church, 
the daily sacrifice of praise. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days, three and a half years. Okay? The, the abomination that maketh desolate in the New Testament um, there's a there's a reference to the abomination spoken of in Daniel. And that's what it is. Over in verse uh, chapter 11, verse 36, he magnifies this Antichrist figure, magnifies himself above every god, including the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The god and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our father, who art in heaven. Holy is his name, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a good way to end this video. Thanks for watching.